Well, good morning. It is 11.25, some two and a, two and a half hours late. Uh, unfortunately, um, this is, again, this is Real Talk with Devin Will. As you can see, my, 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 my beautiful and my more wonderful um, self is not here. Uh, I was listening to a, um, so listening to, I was, I was listening to a, a, a CD or a tape, not CD, but, or a broadcast talking about the, hey Rob, the making of, uh, uh, of women that God saw that the man was, the only thing he didn't say um, when creating the earth was, that's good, hey Tim, um, and he saw it was good was when he created man, he said, it's not good that man should be alone. And um, he took out the um, the best part of Adam and made the woman. And th there is anything that's more true than when talking about my wife Debbie. Um, the best part of me is her. So, and if you know me, you probably know that's true. But I wanted to talk about. Uh, we wanted to talk about the, today, and, and Debbie had to go to work and stuff. So I wanted to really get this out today and get this on YouTube. Go to the YouTube channel, we'll talk with Devin Will, and subscribe and hit the notification bell. I'm going to say that a number of times over the course. Uh, I'm resisting the temptation to ask about about Greek. Good. You should. You should. You should resist that. Toss that down. Uh, in any case, that uh, we're going to talk about the five love languages. Often, when um, we are talking, men and women are talking about men and women, um, a lot of times we don't know, I mean, the conversation goes to, we don't have any idea what they want. Hey, Bear. <laughs> What's up? Um, what time are you going to be home, Bear? Um, you know, we don't have any idea what they want. We don't know. We don't know what to do. And and, and if you've been married, uh, like my friend Tim, any, any, any length of time, it's almost a daily occurrence. <laughs> it's almost a daily occurrence. Um, and what happens is you just do the best you can, right? You just do the best you can. And sometimes uh, you swing and you get a single. And other times you miss Sometimes you hit a home, well, hardly ever do you hit a home run, but uh, sometimes, you know what, sometimes you have to reach in and take one off the shoulder for the team. It's just that, it's just how it is. And um, there was a, uh, a book that came out actually a long time ago um, by Gary Chapman. And you, and you can still get it on, um, on Amazon. Uh, it's called The... Five love languages, and it's a really decent explanation of what those languages are all about, what men respond to, and what women respond to. And there are basically five. And then he wrote, actually, wrote some other books um, about the love languages of, first of all, of couples, of teenagers, um, the five love languages of, uh, of work, and and other things. What people respond to. Because if you live any length of time, especially if you live with a woman any length of time, you'll find out that she doesn't respond to the same thing that you respond to. And that causes conflict sometimes. And then you don't respond to the very same things that she responds to. So we're gonna, I, I'm going to give you a brief overview today, um, because I am by myself, as you can see. Actually, nobody is home with me. Um, there are five. There are, and I'm, we're going to go over them, kind of explain them. Uh, there are five, and they are, and you might want to write this down, or you can, I don't know, go to the internet, because you're already on the freaking internet. Um, gifts, quality time, we've heard that before, words of affirmation, acts of service, and physical touch. And sometimes... You know what, these are not exactly always exactly what you think they mean. So we are going to go over them uh, with you. We. I am going, I'm so used to saying we. It's crazy, isn't it? But uh, we're going to go, I'm going to go over uh, over them with you here in just a bit. 
Uh, I'm trying to m make sure I, I, I get a, a good explanation. Um, there is actually now, and, 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 this, and what brought this up was, there is an app. Is there an app for that? There's an app for that. And it's called Love Nudge. I know it sounds, it sounds a little bit risque. It is not really, not at all. Um, but it talks about the five love languages and it sort of gets, hopefully to get you and your spouse or your girlfriend or your boyfriend or your children or whatever communicating again. Um, if, 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 those, if that communication has, has broken down, it gives you an opportunity to, to start communicating again, or at least to understand, you know what I'm saying? At least to understand what that's about. And why maybe and my why maybe even the communication is broken down over time. I mean, we have a we do that all the time. You know, we 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 don't pay much attention sometimes. We sort of and Debbie and I have talked about this here. We sort of go about our daily lives and we go about our daily lives, bling 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 blong, and then um, we wonder. And we've seen, I mean, you've seen couples, married couples that have been married 20 years, 25 years, and then suddenly get divorced. You know, I was, and because Debbie's not here, I, I can go off on rabbit trails. Um, I, last weekend, this past weekend, was the 50th anniversary of, of the moon landing. And Buzz Aldrin, and this is the problem with being the guy who didn't land on the moon, um, and the other guy, maybe Tim remembers what his name is, uh, went to go see President Trump. And I thought, well, Neil Armstrong wasn't there. And then, then I thought, well, maybe I, he died. Didn't he die? Yeah, so Neil Armstrong died in 2012. Um, so I went and looked him, because I, I went and looked it up on Wikipedia, and of course he, he, he died in 2012. Uh, he was 82 years old. And I saw that he had two wives, and I went, hmm, interesting. And his first wife died... 2008, he got, he got married again. I thought, he got married in 2008? He was 82 years old when he died and he got married again in 2008, which means that when did he get divorced? I thought, well, did his first wife die? No, they got divorced. They had been, he was 64 when they got divorced. How's that possible that you can be married that long, be 64 years old, damn near 70, and decide, I won't be married to you anymore. What? What? These people are in their 70s. <laughs> or they, or they're, they're in their mid-60s and they decide to get divorced. Breakdown in communication. Everybody was so busy. Everybody was so wonderful. But what, what happened was they didn't talk to each other. So, again, we're going to go over, we're going to go over what the five love languages are. And hopefully next week we'll get to talk about them a little bit more in depth and how they may relate to us. I'm saying us because I'm, I'm used to my wife being right here. Um, and how they, may, how they may relate to you and your spouse. First one we're going to go over is words of affirmation. That sounds pretty straightforward. Things like saying I love you, giving compliments, and making positive statements about your loved one is one way of showing love. If words of affirmation are your husband's primary love language, you will help him fill his emotional tank, make him feel good. Because we don't always feel, you know, we don't always feel good. We get up and go, oh, does anybody give a damn about me today? I don't, I don't feel it. Now, not that we should be run, running around acting on our emotions, because most men don't, and most people shouldn't. So, but... That, that's a reality. Whether, you're, whether your emotional tank is high or low, you have to function at the highest level anyway. But the reality of your love tank being high or low is a reality. Okay, so, um, so if, though, you know, if your husband operates on, on you know, uh, being told that, he, that, that you love him and um, that you are cheering for him and all that stuff, it fills his emotional tank. Uh, when you praise him and let him know how much you appreciate him, um, when speaking this love language, be specific in your compliments and words of praise. For instance, instead of saying, you're a great driver, tell them, I feel so safe when you're driving. You really know how to drive the city. You know, be really specific. 
Um, and I know that sounds like, for some people, that sounds like flattery. Um, but that's, it, frankly, that's how some people uh, get feel appreciated. And that opens up all sorts of other ways of communication. And that isn't just men. Women also, um, sometimes their first, their first um, love language is our words of affirmation as well. And men, we can do the very same thing. Um, we can compliment them on, on anything, not just the way they look, uh, not just how sexy they be, um, you know, but hey, listen, I love the way that, you know what, I'm so, so thankful that you take care of our family, that you put, that, that you put our family first so often. I'm so grateful. Debbie, I'm so grateful. Um, that kind of thing. You got it? That's the first one. This is not going to be a very long program, so. There are only five. Acts of service. When your wife's primary love language is acts of service, you convey affection for her by planning and performing thoughtful gestures that you know will please her. To use this language, it is necessary to speak her dialect, which requires knowing her well enough to know what she likes. You know what, if it's time, if, if you want to go, if you think, I'm going to take you out, honey, because I know you need to be taken out, and then you go bowl, and you say, get in the car, and then you go to the bowling alley, because you like the bowling alley, and you know damn well she don't like bowling, and you think she'd just be happy to be out, that's not speaking her dialect. That's not it. Not at all. Um, for instance, if she pre appreciates a clean car, which my wife does, uh, you can surprise her by washing her car. Uh, it's hard to go wrong when you make her favorite food and certain and certain her favorite shirt is clean and making sure that her favorite shirt is clean for the weekend. You understand what I'm saying? You know what? And it's sort of, um, it becomes a, a cliche that the sexiest thing that a woman sees is a man doing housework. The fact of the matter is the sexiest thing that a woman sees oftentimes is a man doing housework. Because you're taking that load off, you know. I tried to make, and, and, and I'm trying, and, and when we come to you, I'm, I'm trying to live some of this stuff. You know, I watched this just last night, of course, before I went to bed, and I swept the area, and I'm, and I'm going to, we're going to make sure that the floor is mopped and the living room is vacuumed today before my wife gets home. Um, and sometimes it's little, and sometimes it's little stuff like if she leaves first, make the bed. And I know that my my fourteen year old self says, "Why well, make the bed? You're just gonna get back in it in a minute, right? Make the bed. Why? Because she likes it. I used to come home and see the bed made. Acts of service. So we have two. We have words of affirmation, acts of service. Now look at your own relationship. Do one of these things? Are one of these things really? Are there, is it resonating already? All right, here's the third one. Quality time. We hear that phrase all the time. You gotta spend quality time. If your partner complains that you never spend enough time with him, his love language is probably quality time. More than just spending minutes or hours or days in proximity to one another. That's not enough. Just like, ah, oh, we're both in the living room or... I'm over here, and you're watching TV over there. No. Or I'm home. I'm out at work. I'm in the yard. I'm in the garage. I'm doing stuff. We're both here at home. That's not good enough. Or I'm, or I'm home, and I'm working on the computer. All right. Even if you're not watching porn. Even if you're not watching porn, it doesn't count. Sorry. Um, the idea is more than just spending time, hours, days in proximity to each other. Quality time means focusing on him or her and your relationship. One of the main dialects of quality time, says Chapman, is quality conversation. Practice active listening by giving him your undivided attention 
not interrupting. Now, you could substitute him, her for him. You could, okay, I should say them. Um, your undivided attention, not interrupting, making eye contact, and asking questions for clarity. It's active listening. Take an interest in what interests them, and they will feel your love. Some people just want to be listened to sometimes. That doesn't mean that you're sitting across I mean, that, that you're sitting across the living room on your phone. It's not a phone. Uh huh. Uh huh. That's not it. If you think that's it, you're wrong. Let me help you. You're wrong. You're speaking the wrong dialect. You're wrong. If that's what if that's what quality time has turned into, then you don't have any quality time. All right, now here's one, giving gifts. Now, Chapman, the guy who wrote the book, studied various cultural practices in his anthropological <laughs> work, and he found one common factor related to marriage, gift giving, a visual symbol of affection. Gift giving is fundamental to love for the person who whose love language is gift giving, it is truly the thoughtful, it was, excuse me, it's truly the thought that counts. So pay attention to the value, value your partner places on gifts and symbols to learn if it's their primary language of gift giving. If that's their primary language. Now, um, we like to think that we can re fall into that that makes somebody materialistic. It doesn't make anybody materialistic because those gifts could be anything. Um, gifts, gift giving, and acts of service sort of weave together, don't they? Don't they? So we have to make sure that we know what our partner likes. And it doesn't have to be expensive. You don't, I mean, the huge gestures are always nice, but not always necessary. It's the thoughtfulness. Is that you went to, I don't know, you said that you were going to, 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 to Chick-fil-A, right? And your wife said, okay. And you said, listen to this scenario, because if you're married, you'll, you'll understand this, this, this scenario, right? Uh, you, before you left, you said, do you want anything? And she said, that's exactly right. She said, no. So you went to Chick-fil-A and you got yourself a number one with an extra sandwich. So you got two sandwiches and you got your fry and you damn near ate the fries on, in the car on the way home, right? Because that's how we do. And then you get home with the bag and she says what? Say it, boys. Did you bring me anything? What's that tell you? One of her love languages is gifts. It's giving gifts. I'm going to tell you something that I'm never going to do again. I'm never going to Chick-fil-A and getting an emerald with two sandwiches and not bringing back an extra fry. No. If I can't afford the extra fry, then I can't go. That's what it is. Gift giving. And it's all, it's all and it's usually small. It doesn't have to be huge. It doesn't have to be this monstrous gesture but that's that's what we're talking about all right number four told you this is going to be short or we're already on number four our five why we're number five we, went, we said words of affirmation acts of service quality time gift giving and number five physical touch Physical touch is a powerful communicator. Chapman explains the relationship um, with an individual whose primary love language is physical touch is in trouble without tender touches. Now, this is now don't get confused. This doesn't mean sex. A lot of times we think that this is this is sex. This doesn't mean sex. Physical touch includes kissing, embracing, holding hands, pat on the knee, or the dental touches. Because some people need, and we talked about this in a, uh, a previous video, some people need to just feel like they are physically connected to somebody. 
your spouse may reach out and, and for your hand at the movies or when you're walking around the mall or just in the house. Their first love language may be physical touch because they just need that physical connection. And, this, and, it, and again, it doesn't always have to lead to sexual intimacy. And most times it doesn't. Is that, is that unexpected hug or a kiss on the cheek or in the mouth? Y'all marry, y'all kiss on the mouth. You understand? You be really careful about that. Now, not every, now understand, not everybody's first love language is a physical touch. But if your spouse's first love language is a physical touch, you're going to have to find a way to communicate with them by that. You understand know what I'm saying? So it doesn't matter what your first love language is. I mean, once you understand yours, that's fine. But it's I think it's every bit and more important to understand what their love language is. That's what's going to um, enrich the, the quality of your relationship moving forward. That's what you got to work on. And guys, you got to, guys, girls, y'all got to work on that. Now, next week, I think we should go, we'll go over this. Um, the app is called The Love Nudge. Uh, I'd show it to you, but it's on my phone and I'm recording on my phone. So I can't show it to you, I'm sorry. So you're going to have to look it up. It's available in the Apple, in the Apple Play Store. It's on, in, on the app, excuse me, in the Apple Store and on the, in the Google Play Store. Um, and it and takes you on a quiz to find out, quiz, one of my favorite words ever, to find out what your love language is. And um, so it's cool. And what you can do is that you can get your spouse to log on too. And so you could be, you, you could do it by yourself or you can get connected with your spouse and you should. So you can do it together. And it seems crazy for, for a lot of people who have been married for a long time that they're going to now communicate through, you know what, with their wife through this stupid app, right? I know. I know. Try it. If you don't like it, you don't have to do it. I'm not telling you to do it. I'm not getting any money. This is not a, uh, an endorsement of the app. This is something that I found that I thought that I would, we thought I'd bring to you. And the app, because it's but it's connected to um, love languages, I thought was a perfect topic for what we talk about. All right, listen. Um, again, my wife is not here, so she is at work, and there's some stuff I got to get done too. So until we see you again, go out there and learn something, love somebody, and for goodness sakes, y'all take care of yourself. We'll see you when we see you. Peace.